Hello again. I am, as I have remarked on more than one occasion, no kind of expert in things such as economics. I'm simply a plain man who is puzzled by some things which I observe. And when I'm puzzled by something, I usually ask questions. I have noticed in the past that asking questions often seems to enrage people. Ask, for instance, why do we need immigration? And watch how annoyed many people get. How can I be so stupid? Obviously we need immigrants to do jobs that we cannot or will not do, to look after the ageing population, to be competitive in the modern world, to attract the brightest and best, pick fruit, look after old people. For a dozen other reasons, which are obvious to anybody other than an adult like me. This is all well and good, but then I'm compelled to ask myself, when did these things all begin? I ask this because I've been looking at an old book of mine from 1993. It's the Atlas of British History. Yeah, published by Routledge, very respectable and um, authoritative account of the way things were in 1993 it was published. Hmm. That's a shade over 30 years ago. Britain has not changed all that dramatically since then. We're not talking about Victorian times or even the 1960s or 1970s. In 1990, life expectancy was 76, and it's now 80. So there isn't all that much more ageing population now than there was then. We belonged at that time to the European Union. There was free movement between this country and Europe. This was actually pretty much the modern world. And yet, that year, there were just... 28,000 immigrants to this country. Of them, 5,170 came from Australia and New Zealand, 3,660 from the United States, and 850 from Canada. So, in other words, 28,000 immigrants and a third of them from America, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Last year, the number of immigrants was getting on for, well, getting on for three quarters of a million. It was over 700,000 by the time they'd revised the figures. We had care homes in 1990, and we also had fruit that needed to be picked on um, farms in East Anglia. What do you suppose changed between 1990 and now that has necessitated the importation each year of almost three quarters of a million people. In 1990 we managed perfectly well without mass immigration and now we are apparently unable to survive as a nation without it. As I say, just asking this question infuriates many people and they will at once trot out all the old guff about people needing to pick fruit and look after old folk, but that was all true as well in 1990. But we managed perfectly well. What do viewers think? What has changed which has caused this desperate need for mass immigration which did not exist 30 years ago? Here's another thing. Looking at the figures here for people granted asylum. I don't know if anyone can read this. This is... Um, the page relating to asylum up until 1992. These figures are almost beyond belief. Between 1985 and 1992, that's a period of seven years, we granted asylum to just 200 Pakistanis and 175 Indians. That's it over the course of seven years. Sudan, another 100. The numbers over seven years are all in the low hundreds. For comparison, in the year ending 2023, we granted 20,000 people asylum 
because they had apparently well-founded fears of persecution. And in addition to that, we allowed over 100,000 Ukrainian refugees to come into the country where they will stay practically forever. Not only that, 2,500 Afghans and 5,000 family reunion visas. That's for people we've granted asylum to that are bringing their wife and kids over. How come in the late 1980s and early 1990s Britain was allowing a few hundred asylum seekers into the country each year and now the numbers have soared and are measured in tens of thousands? Was the world less dangerous 30 years ago? Did fewer people need asylum then? What has actually changed? Again, even asking such a question will cause some people to eye one with disgust and they'll accuse you of being heartless and callous and then go on about Britain's proud history of giving refuge to the persecuted and dis dispossessed. But still nobody seems to be able to explain why the numbers have shot up so much in the last few years. I'm glad that I have so many old books because they cannot be altered or deleted as happens so often with statistics on the internet. They give us a permanent and reliable record of how things used to be in this country. And if anybody can really explain why immigration is now 20 or 30 times higher than it was 30 years ago, I shall be very interested to hear.